In this video, we're going to focus on integrating polynomial functions and just some basic functions in general. So what is the antiderivative of 3x minus x to the fourth? Go ahead and try this problem. Now we could use the power rule. The antiderivative of x to the n is going to be x raised to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c. So this is 3x to the first power. And if you want to, you could separate it into two separate integrals. You don't have to do this, but you could do it if you want to. So the antiderivative of x is x squared divided by 2, but multiplied by 3. And for x to the fourth, it's going to be x to the fifth over 5, plus some constant c. And so that's it for the first example. And let's try some other problems. So go ahead and determine the antiderivative of 6x squared plus the square root of x. Now the first thing I would recommend doing is rewriting the expression. The square root of x is x to the 1 half. Now let's use the power rule. So first, let's determine the antiderivative of x squared. It's x cubed divided by 3. And for x to the 1 half, 1 half plus 1 is 1 1.5 or 3 over 2. And instead of dividing it by 3 over 2, you can multiply it by 2 over 3. 1 divided by 3 over 2 is the same as 2 over 3. Now we could simplify it. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So the final answer is 2x cubed times 2 thirds x raised to the 3 halves plus c. And so that's it for this problem. Now let's find the indefinite integral of this expression x plus 5 times 2x minus 3. So what do you think we need to do for this problem? Well, we can't use like a product rule for integration. If you see a problem like this, it's best to FOIL before you integrate. So x times 2x, that's going to be 2x squared. And then x times negative 3, we have negative 3x. And then 5 times 2x is 10x. And then 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. And now let's combine like terms. So negative 3x plus 10x, that's going to be 7x. So this is what we now have. So now we can find the antiderivative. The antiderivative of 2x squared is 2x to the third power divided by 3. And for x to the first power, it's going to be x squared over 2. And if you find the antiderivative of any constant, it's always going to be just add an x in front of it. So the antiderivative of negative 15 is negative 15x, and then plus c. And that's it for this problem. Try this problem. Go ahead and find the antiderivative of 3x plus 4 squared. Now, you don't want to integrate it in this form. Instead, you want to FOIL 3x plus 4. So this is equivalent to 3x plus 4 times another 3x plus 4. So 3x times 3x, that's 9x squared. And then we have 3x times 4, which is 12x. And 4 times 3x, that's also 12x. And then 4 times 4, which is 16. Now let's combine like terms. 12 plus 12 is 24. So we now have 9x squared plus 24x plus 16. So now we can find the antiderivative. So for x squared, it's going to be x cubed over 3. And for x to the first power, it's going to become x squared over 2. And the antiderivative of a constant like 16 is just 16x. And don't forget to add c the constant of integration. Now let's simplify what we have. 
So the final answer is going to be 9 divided by 3, which is 3. 24 divided by 2 is 12, plus 16x, plus c. And so this is the answer. Now what if you're given a fraction? For instance, let's say if we have x to the fifth power plus 4x cubed minus 5x all divided by x squared. How can we integrate this particular function? Now the first thing you should do is divide every term in the numerator by x squared. This works if this is a monomial, if there's only one term in the denominator. And so you want to separate it into three fractions. And then you want to integrate the expression. So x to the fifth divided by x squared, 5 minus 2 is 3. So that becomes x cubed. And then 4x cubed divided by x squared, that's 4x. And then 5x over x squared. x squared, you can see it as x times x. So you can cancel the next variable. And so you're left with 5 over x with the negative sign as well. Now, before we integrate, because we have a rational function, we need to rewrite the expression. So let's move the x variable to the top. So it's going to change from x to the positive one to x raised to the negative one. So we have x cubed plus 4x to the first power minus 5x raised to the negative one power. Actually, you know what? We don't need to do that. I take that back. I'm going to leave it as 1 over x. The reason for this is because the antiderivative of 1 over x is the natural log of x. And that's something that you should keep in mind. So the antiderivative of x cubed is going to be x to the fourth over 4. And for 4x, is going to be 4x squared over 2. And then minus 5 times the natural log of x plus c. So we can write the final answer as 1 fourth x to the 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And this is it. Minus 5 ln x plus c. Now let's work on finding the indefinite integral of trigonometric functions. What is the antiderivative of 1 plus tangent squared x dx? So go ahead and take a minute and try that problem. Now, this is one of the Pythagorean identities that you need to be familiar with. 1 plus tangent squared is equal to something. And that something is secant squared. Now, what is the antiderivative of secant squared? The derivative of which trigonometric function is secant squared? The antiderivative of secant squared is tangent. So the answer is going to be tangent x plus c. And so that's it for this problem. Let's try another one. Find the antiderivative of sine x divided by 1 minus sine squared. Go ahead and try that. Now, you need to be familiar with another Pythagorean identity, and that is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So if we take this term and move it to that side, we can see that cosine squared is equal to 1 minus sine squared. So we can rewrite this expression as sine divided by cosine squared. So how does this help us? What can we do with this? What we need to do at this point is expand cosine squared. Cosine squared is basically cosine times cosine. So I'm going to write this as sine x over cosine x times 1 over cosine x. Now what is sine divided by cosine? Sine divided by cosine is tangent and 1 over cosine is secant. The derivative of what function is secant tangent? 
the derivative of secant is secant tangent. So the antiderivative of secant tangent is secant. So the final answer is secant plus c. So you need to review the trigonometric functions and some of the identities. You need to know the reciprocal identities and the Pythagorean identities. And I have a playlist on trigonometry if you want to look at that. So you can find that on my channel. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.